Today we will learn about grasslets. So we have a bunch of vertices and some edges and what we get is a graph. Now we take a subset of the vertices such that all the vertices in this subset are connected in the original graph. We also pick all the edges among all vertices in this subset. What we get is a graphlet. We can find a large number of graphlets in a graph. For a fixed number of vertices, we can get only finite number of possible graphlet structures. Once we identify these defined graphlets in a graph, it gives a local insight about interactions. Also, characterization of the entire network is possible by finding the abundance of various graphlet structures. Let's look at the two node graphlets. For a two node case, only one graphlet is possible. For a three node case, this is an option for a graphlet and this is two. But there is a difference. For this one, all the node positions are equivalent, while for this one, there is a difference between the middle position and the end positions, and this difference becomes significant when we consider at what node is the graphlet rooted to the actual graph. Because of this, we call this structure has two orbits. Thus, in spite of having two graphlet structures for three nodes, it has three orbits. For a four node case, we have six graphlets and 11 orbits. For five node, we have 21 graphlets and 58 orbits. Till five nodes, we have 29 graphlets and 73 graphlet orbits. Analysis with graphlets means going through a lot of steps, but the first one is identifying the graphlets from a network. Number of nodes of in graphlet, if it is increased, then it also increases the complexity of the graphlet identifying algorithm. Beyond five, this complexity gets too big. Also, for most practical cases, the graphlet still five nodes serves the purpose because it still covers the interactions still five nearby jumps. Let us look at the network properties based on graphlets. Here is a tool called Relative Graphlet Frequency Distance. It can be used to compare two networks based on the frequencies of the appearance of all three to five node graphlets, which are indexed from one to 29. First, take a case of a sample graph. In this graph, how many three to five graphlet structures are there. We see there are eight kind of graphlet structures and this is their frequencies. For a general case, let Ni stand for the number of graphlets of type I, where I goes from one to 29 and T stand for the total number of graphlets then the relative graphlet frequency distance between two graphs g and h can be defined as the absolute of the difference of fi g minus fi h summed over all i's this fi is defined as minus logarithm of ni by t the division by t is important because similarity between two graphs should be independent of total number of nodes or edges and should 
only depend on differences between relative frequencies. Also, the logarithm is used because frequencies of different graphlets can differ by several order of magnitudes and the distance measure should not be entirely dominated by the most frequent graphs. Another tool we have is graphlet degree distribution agreement. This is a generalization of degree distribution. Normally a degree distribution is number of nodes touching k edges for each value of k. Edges are actually g0. GDD generalizes this degree distribution for all other graph lists from GI I equals to 0 to 29. For GDD is defined as number of nodes touching K graphlets GI in a particular way. We say particular way here because what we mean by it is the orbits. Thus, from here, we shift from the index i, which is from 0 to 29 and represents set of graphlets, to index j, which is from 0 to 72 and represents the set of orbits. The jth GDT is the distribution of the number of nodes in j touching the corresponding graphlet at orbit j k times. It is denoted by d j g of k. This value is scaled down to decrease the contribution of larger degrees in a GDT. It's then normalized by dividing by the area of the distribution. Now, for two networks G and H, a distance between their normalized GDD is defined. In this formula, the DJ or the distance is always from 0 to 1. If it's 0, then the two networks are identical. And if it's 1, then they are very far from similarity. The, the interpretation of 0 and 1 is reversed by taking a quantity aj which is 1 minus dj. Now 0 becomes very far and 1 becomes identical. The total GDD agreement between networks g and h is expressed as the arithmetic or geometric average of the jth JDD agreements over all 73 Js. We have another tool called graphlet degree vectors or signatures. Degree of a node is the number of edges that the node touches. Graphlet degree vector of a node is a generalization of that it is the number of graphlets of particular orbits that the node touches. The GDV or signature of a node is then essentially a vector of 73 coordinates. If we take a example of a GDV of a node U we can say that this is the meaning, this is the number of graphlets which touches the node U. The signature of a node or the graphlet degree vector of a node provides scope for computing similarity in a node. A higher signature similarity between two nodes corresponds to a higher topological similarity between their extended neighborhoods out to distance 4. For this video, I have taken the reference 
from this. I highly encourage you to take a look at this if you are interested in graphlets. Thank you.